Adventures with Paul. Hey yo, welcome back to Adventures with Paul. Last week on the channel at National Harbor, we rode by Jones Point Park. Today, we're gonna take you there, and then we're gonna come back, and being on the water makes me feel like fish. I'm gonna bring you this banging tuna recipe, so come with. I'm ready, guys, so let's... Woo! Go. We're gonna get you on up to Jones Point Park. First day of summer vacation. Let's go. All right, guys, in last week's episode, we were up on that bridge and we talked about coming to Jones Point. So we have made it here. Let's go check it out. So as you can see, Jones Point runs along the Mount Vernon Trail, which we've been on a lot. It's under the Wilson Bridge. Off in that direction, you have National Harbor where we were at last week. And see if I can show you, off in the distance, that direction, you can see Washington DC, the Capitol building. There was a need for boats and ships during World War I, and Jones Point was used as a shipyard. Uh, as it says here, it was the fastest shipyard ever built. We're under the bridge. It's pretty cool. They've turned all of this into a park. You can see they have basketball courts. Like I said, the Mount Vernon Trail runs through here. And I believe, I'm not entirely sure, I think you used to be able to catch the, uh, the Alexandria water taxi to here, but I'm not sure if they do that anymore or if they ever did that. The concrete foundations here were from the shipyard for World War I. They hired over 7,000 people and used new technology, I guess you would say, which was uh, mass production that came from the automobile industry to produce ships. The first ship was the SSS Gunston Hull, which was named after George Mason's plantation home. You start to get to this wooded area back through here. We're on the Virginia side right now. When you cross the bridge over there, you go into Maryland. You're gonna see here that we have these stones, District of Columbia. And I think, let's see what this one says. Same thing. So this just talks about the different side. I think it all has to do with, um, it's actually with the Potomac River and who owns what. So you're gonna see ones along the way for District of Columbia, uh, Maryland and, and Virginia, and I will give you more information after I look it up. So the indigenous population has used Jones Point for years, a lot of it for fishing. And if you see here, you can find American eel, hickory shad, and striped bass. So like I said, it does say who owns the river. So there was a land grant from King Charles I in 1632. Maryland thought they owned it. Virginia thought they owned it. Then the district thought they owned it. So they have these markers. This one over here says Maryland. So this must be the Maryland side of the river. This talks about surveying and how the nation's capital begins here. After the Revolutionary War, they wanted to keep a 10 mile square territory along the Potomac and Jones Point is part of that.
this down here is actually one of the original markers. You can see down in there. It's hard to see. It's glass. I don't think you can see it. And then we have the house behind us. Let's walk up the steps and have a little peek. So this is pretty cool guys. It says DC's first building block. So in 1791, surveyors on Jones Point began to lay out the 10 mile square that would become Washington DC. The first marker for the survey, the South Cornerstone, was set in place on this spot. That's actually what we were looking at. It says, although the stone within the protective enclosure may be a replacement dating from 1794, it is nonetheless among the oldest existing physical monuments associated with the federal city of Washington, D.C. And that is what that little block that you could see down there was. Very cool. We have a great vantage point from here. Like I said, you can see National Harbor off in the distance. If you haven't seen it, guys, go check out last week's episode for the top five things to do over at National Harbor. talks about the remarkable Margaret Brent. She is an early women's suffragist, but on this plot of land, she had to cut it back and they grew tobacco here. You can see the bridge in the background. The house and the lighthouse are this direction. So another fun fact about Jones Point is that there is a lighthouse that was built in 1855 it's the last remaining Riverine lighthouse in the state of Virginia, and it would have been for this whole area. This mentions the Jones Point Lighthouse. As it says, it was one of the busiest seaports in the Chesapeake region. To help guide heavy Potomac River ship traffic, the federal government built the Jones Point Lighthouse, illuminating the beacon for the first time on May 1st, 1856. It was one of the first lighthouses designed using a new unified plan, combining the beacon and keeper's house into a single structure. Well, what do you need for shipbuilding in the 1830s, 1850s? You need rope. So Josiah Davis constructed a narrow 400 yard long building where rope was manufactured for ships rigging. Sorry for the noise in the background. There is 495 that direction. I think we have about two more signs left. Let's go see what's left of Jones Point. Here is the Virginia marker. We're going to walk to what I believe is the last sign here. And let's check this out. So this is all of the history of Jones Point. So we have prehistory to colonial settlement. Talked about a lot of that with tobacco. The emerging nation. So we get the Revolutionary War. Talk about world wars to the present with the shipbuilding. And then you have the bridge. And then, if you can see off into the distance, you have the lighthouse. This is a rudder from the World War I era. It is evidence of the shipyard at Jones Point. It was recovered along the banks in May of 2000. It measures 22 feet high and four and a half feet wide. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the little tour of Jones Point Park. Um, if you live in and around the DC area, I would recommend coming here to check this out. Just a really cool place, what they've done with it, with this park. But I'm getting really hungry and being on this water, I'm feeling fish. So let's go home and cook that. All right, guys, welcome back to the test kitchen. Today, we're gonna take a small yellowfin tuna steak and sesame crust it and give it this boom, boom sauce. So let's get in here and get after it. Here's how we're gonna marinate this fish. We're gonna use about a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, a tablespoon sesame oil, 
tablespoon soy sauce. Lemon juice. About a tablespoon of hoisin. And a little bit of Thai red curry paste. We're just gonna mix this all together. We are going to take our tuna steak. This is about a quarter pound or so. And we're just gonna marinate it in here. I'm gonna get it on both sides. And then we're going to place it in the fridge for as long as you desire. Uh, I'll probably go for 20, 30 minutes or so. What I didn't show you is that we're toasting up some quinoa. And then into the quinoa, we have about a cup of arugula, two small Campari tomatoes, about a quarter cup or a quarter of a red bell pepper, not a quarter cup, and a few peas, sugar snap peas that we took out of the shell and that we left in the shell. So to the quarter cup of quinoa, I've added these vegetables. I'm gonna let it chill afterwards, but I kinda want these vegetables to just kinda cook ever so slightly. It's, it's more of like a uh, quinoa, take on like a quinoa salad. Here's what's gonna happen next, guys. We're gonna take this yellowfin tuna out. Going to remove it from the liquid and pat it dry. Now we're gonna take our tuna, about a quarter cup of sesame seeds. We wanna get all of it on each side, pat it down in there, and then we're gonna take this to the stove. This is not gonna take very long to cook. You want tuna to be uh, rare to medium rare. So I'm gonna go probably a minute or so on each side and then we're gonna flip it. We have flipped it over, starting to get a little brown. Not gonna cook it for too much longer. Gonna cut this now and hope that I didn't butcher it and cook it for too long, let's see. Gonna hit our tuna with this sauce that we made. It's looking good. All right guys. You know the deal, taste test. Gonna get in here for this tuna. Mmm. All that marinade is good. That sauce I made is banging. Mmm, 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 mmm. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, Jones Point Park, definitely a sight to see in the DC area. Uh, if you're currently living here or on vacation, why don't you check that out? Drop a comment below, and now that it's summertime, give me some ideas for places that I can go and explore. I have a lot more time on my hands. As always, guys, if you like this video or others on the channel, smash that like button. And be sure to ring the bell so that you get notifications. Subscribe if you feel inclined to do so. And as always, guys, keep it positive. Keep it stoked. We'll catch you on the flip side.